Hey everyone. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, GPU performance optimization and performance analysis. Last week we talked about uh, specifically improving the performance of ray traced reflections. And that got me thinking, I wanted to do a tutorial that goes over um, the method for troubleshooting GPU performance problems. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to jump right into it. I have a scene here uh, that just has horribly abysmal performance. If you can see here, it's less than seven frames a second. And this thing, scene is just really chugging. And so what I want to do is show you the method that we use for uh, figuring out where the source of the problem is and fixing it. So the first thing that we're going to do is hold down Control and Shift and push the comma key. And what this is gonna do is open up this new window called the GPU Visualizer. And this is a super useful tool in Unreal. If we take a look at this here, we have this bar here at the top. And what this represents is one single frame and each different colored element is a different job that the GPU is doing in that frame. And so the larger the bars are, the more time it took for that particular item to be completed. If we look down here at the bottom, you can see that it took 144 milliseconds, 100, almost 145 milliseconds to render our scene. So then we come up here and look at scene and it breaks down the scene so that we can see uh, exactly what is being done in that 144 milliseconds. Now, if we want to get 30 frames a second, we need to get this 144 down to 33. And if we want to get 60, uh, 60 frames a second, we need to get this 144 milliseconds down to 16 milliseconds. So that's what we're going to be doing. If you take a look over here, you can see that there's a little arrow next to scene and I can click on that and it's gonna break down the bar into individual uh, elements. So you can see all of the different components that go into rendering our scene. And here in the middle, you can see that the two largest bars are diffuse and indirect AO, and also ray traced reflections. So there are two elements that are just completely destroying our frame rate. The first is, uh, uh, diffuse and indirect AO, and then uh, ray trace reflections. So let's drill down a little bit deeper and go into diffuse and indirect AO. And you can see that the AO here says ray tracing GI brute force. So the brute force uh, global illumination is taking up 50 milliseconds, almost 50 milliseconds of rendering time. Uh, one of the important things to keep in mind with ray tracing is that it's it's really expensive and there are a lot of different things that you can do with ray tracing. You can do ambient occlusion, you can do global illumination, you can do reflections, you can do translucency, but it's probably not a good idea to do all of these things. And especially in a scene like this where the light sources are static and all of the meshes are static, doing global illumination is probably not such a great idea. And so the first performance optimization that we're gonna do is we're gonna choose in this particular scene that we only want to do um, ray traced reflections and we don't wanna do ray traced ambient occlusion or ray traced global illumination. And so I'm just gonna come over here to our global illumination tab and drop this down actually the uh, the ray tracing global illumination and here our ray tracing global illumination is set to brute force so instead of brute force I'm just gonna set this to disabled to turn off uh, global illumination uh, to turn off ray traced global illumination all right with the GPU visualizer open again you can see that now I've got a new profile. So my scene went down to a hundred and, uh, sorry, my scene went down to 44 milliseconds, almost 45. And so that's a significant improvement. So now let's check and see what our next highest item is. And that's 
it says ray tracing reflections. So let's open up our scene here and scroll down. And here are our ray tracing reflections. It says that this is taking 17 milliseconds. So let's see if there's something that we can do about that. Come over here again to our post process volume to our uh, reflections. And you can see our reflections type is set to ray tracing. If I turn screen space reflections on, we're going to get a pretty big jump in performance. But I actually do want to keep ray tracing reflections. I just maybe want to do something about them so they're a little bit cheaper to render. So let's come in here to the ray tracing reflections settings. I can see that my max roughness is set to 0.6. I know that I can get a performance optimization if I set them to something more like 0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see that my performance jumped up to 36 frames a second now. So that was a good optimization. I also have shadows showing in my reflections and I can get a little bit of performance improvement if I turn off shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, let's open our visualizer again and see what kind of a benefit that got for us. All right, so our reflections are no longer the high bar and we've gotten our scene down to 26 milliseconds, so we're doing better. It looks like our high bar is now the direct in diffuse and AO again. So let's open this up again and we'll come down here to diffuse indirect and AO. And it looks like the new largest thing here is ray tracing ambient occlusion. Now, if you remember, I decided I didn't want to do ray traced ambient occlusion. I want to just use the, the regular screen space ambient occlusion. And so I'm going to come down here and um, pick our post process volume again. And here's our ambient occlusion settings, ray traced ambient occlusion and I'm just gonna turn that off. Uh, really easy fix there. So you can see I went from 35 frames a second up to uh, 42 frames a second. And uh, if we close our GPU visualizer here, I just wanna show you the difference here. I'm gonna uh, come down to buffer visualizations, ambient occlusion. So here is my screen space ambient occlusion and here's my ray traced ambient occlusion. I'll toggle those on and off again. So fairly similar in what they do. This is this is one that you can you can leave out uh, if you're hurting for performance. So here's ray trace ambient occlusion, and here's screen space ambient occlusion. It's maybe a little dark, so let's come up here to ambient occlusion and maybe set the intensity to uh, 0.5 instead. All right, so we're doing a pretty good job of optimizing this scene. I've gone from uh, about seven frames a second up to about 44 frames a second. Let's take a look at our GPU analyzer again and see what we have. So we've got a couple of bars that are pretty big here. Uh, it looks like ray tracing reflections is our largest one. So let's kind of come down here and take a look at it. Yeah, ray tracing reflections uh, are taking about four milliseconds now which is still kind of high. So let's see if there's anything else that we can do about that. I think I've pretty much exhausted all of the settings that I can use uh, in the post-process volume, but I just want to take a look. So our reflections are set to ray tracing. Uh, we've got max bounces set to two, but I kind of like that setting. So it looks like we're going to uh, go ahead and do some of our uh, some of our console commands to optimize our reflections. Um, let's come back here and we're currently at 42 frames a second. So first of all, let's switch to the hybrid method of doing ray traced reflections, which is a blend between ray trace reflections and SSR. So if I type r.raytracing.reflections.hybrid and then I set it to one, that's going to give us hybrid reflections, a um, blend between SSR and ray traced reflections. So I'm going from a frame rate of 42 FPS to a frame rate of about 46. So that was a really nice win. And I didn't notice any, uh, any adverse effects on our scene. It still looks pretty good. 
Let's try setting our um, our roughness value to accumulate. This is a command that we talked about uh, last week that will accumulate the roughness. So when a ray hits a surface, uh, it calculates the roughness there. And then when it hits another surface, it adds the roughness. And this is good because the higher the roughness goes, the greater the chance that we're gonna exceed our max roughness value and actually stop ray tracing. So I'm gonna turn this one on and looks like that one didn't make too big of a difference in our scene, um, but we're gonna press forward anyway. The next setting that we're gonna change is the max ray distance. So I'm gonna add another console command here, raytracing.reflections.maxraydistance500, and this limits the reflection ray distance uh, to five meters. So I'm gonna turn that one on. And you can see our performance went up a little. We're getting 46 or 47 frames a second. And let's do one more. So this one is going to render our resolution at, or our reflections at half resolution. R.raytracing.reflections.screen percentage 50. So this is gonna uh, reduce the resolution of our reflections by about 50 and should give us a decent performance improvement. So we jumped from 46, 47 frames a second up to 51. So that's a pretty good optimization for our reflections. Let's open our GPU visualizer again and see what our result is. Control shift comma. And let's see if we can find it. So here's our base pass, lighting compos uh, composite, uh, screen space denoiser, ray trace translucency. Okay, I just wanna point out that we've gone from uh, 144 milliseconds and now our scene is taking 17. So a pretty amazing amount of optimization is going on here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can do anything else with our scene. I, I, I think that this translucency is not something that we need. Our, our scene is all hard surfaces. And so I think we can come over here to, uh, we can come over here to our uh, post-process volume and come down here to translucency. And you can see our, our, our translucency type is set to ray tracing and we really don't need that right now. So I'm gonna turn our translucency to raster. And now we've got uh, an FPS value of 58. So we're getting really close. Let's, uh, let's run our GPU visualizer one more time and see if there's anything else that we can clean up in this scene. We, we're, we've got our scene down to 15.26. And I think that's gonna about do it for us. We're, we're at the point where we can render our scene at 60 frames a second. So we went, we went from uh, about seven frames a second all the way up to 60 using the GPU visualizer to figure out which parts of our scene were taking the longest. Now, if I wanted to take this even further, probably focus right here on the light composition tasks. Uh, this part of our uh, rendering is taking four and a half milliseconds, and we could drill down into this and try to find out exactly uh, what is going on to, to make things in here take a long time. Uh, it looks probably like it's just the number of lights at this point. Uh, I've got quite a few lights in the scene and that could be a target for further optimization. But anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that uh, you'll be able to use the GPU visualizer to take a look at your scene and see what elements of the rendering process are taking the most amount of time so that you can then uh, optimize your scene and get your frame rate uh, up to where it needs to be so that your game's playable and fun. If you like this video, be sure to uh, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. And we'll see you next week, everybody.